Hey all, I'm Paul Reese, a developer advocate with Google, and this is the ML on Android with MediaPipe series, where I'll introduce some machine learning concepts and their application on Android with the MediaPipe framework. In this video, I'm going to focus on audio and how you can perform audio classification in your Android apps with MediaPipe tasks. Audio classification can be used for quite a few different things, including determining a music style, different animal sounds, or specific spoken words to name just a handful. Before we really dig into how to use audio classification in an Android app, we should go over how audio data works so you can have a better understanding of what's happening when writing your Android code. Two of the more common ways to visualize audio data are waveforms and spectrograms. Waveforms show sound pressure, or the difference in pressure from a sound compared to the ambient area pressure, though really for our purposes, you can just think of this like volume over time. While this is kind of cool, it doesn't really give us enough of an understanding of the data to do what we want to do with it. Two similar sounds may have waveforms that look almost identical, such as a siren and a musical instrument that only plays one drawn out note. Spectrograms, however, add frequency to the mix, giving us just enough information to be able to tell the difference between two unique sounds. When you're looking at a spectrogram, the x-axis still represents time, but the y-axis now represents frequency, or pitch, while the color represents the sound pressure. Once you have this visual representation, it turns out that audio classification happens using a lot of the same techniques that image classification uses. So let's take a look at a couple of examples using the 3D Spectrogram Chrome experiment, which I'll link in the description for this video. If you select the harp sound, you can see how the spectrogram active areas descend as the instrument plays lower and lower notes. Whereas if you say the word right, you'll get a sound with two immediate peaks in the low and mid frequency ranges. As you say right, then you'll notice a flick of high frequency sound when you add the t sound. What's cool about this is that even if you have different people say the same word, you will still get a similar enough pattern to be able to classify the word. Now that you have a better understanding of how to represent audio data in a visual way, let's think about how a generic audio classification model would approach the problem. The model we will use in this video is called YAMNET, and it attempts to classify audio in segments that are 0.975 seconds in length. As audio comes in, you will accept a segment, attempt to classify it, return the results, and then move on to the next segment that has been recorded. But what if the sound we're trying to classify appears across multiple segments rather than cleanly within one? This is actually what we see on the left side of this image. That's where a concept called overlap comes in. Basically, you have two separate classification streams happening at once, but they're offset from each other to try and catch those edge cases. For example, you could have 50% overlap, meaning the second set of segments will start from the middle of the first set and they'll have a better chance at finding sounds that are missed by the first classification stream. With that out of the way, it's time to take a look at how you can do this in your Android apps with MediaPipe tasks. We'll start out by importing the necessary library through your build.gradle file. You can find the current version in the official documentation that's listed in this video's description. If you've been following along with this series, then creating the audio classifier should look fairly similar to what you've learned about in a past video. You will start with the base options builder where you can set the model path. Following that, you can create the classifier specific options, which are where you will set the minimum acceptable score threshold that must be passed before a result is returned to the rest of the app, the max number of results that you can expect back, and the running mode. In this example, you will learn about live streaming classification, though you can also accept an audio file from the user's device. And since live stream classification happens asynchronously, you will need to associate a set of listeners with the builder before creating the final options and classifier object. This next step is where things start to diverge from the image classification example. To perform audio classification, you will need a way to record audio. For this example, you can use Android's audio record object. Since there's a variety of different options here, we should also take a moment to try and understand what they're doing and why we need them. The first parameter sets the default audio input hardware for the device. The second is sampling rate. This represents the number of data points an audio clip should contain. 
So for this example, you will use a value of 16,000, which means that each second of audio should consist of 16,000 data points that can be analyzed. The channel config value is set to use the default microphone from the device. Finally, you will need to define the byte buffer size. Since you know the sample rate for one second, but the model only accepts clips in 0.975 seconds in length, you will need to multiply those together and convert them to bytes to initialize the audio buffer. You might also notice that there's a buffer size factor included in here. This increases the buffer size to account for any potential errors in recording. And for this example, you can simply use a factor of two. With that created, you can start the recording and kick off a runnable that will pull data from the recorder buffer to classify it. One thing worth noticing here is that you can set the runnable interval to account for overlap by using the length of an audio record and modifying it based on the percentage of overlap that you want to use. After all of that, this classification is done by creating a new audio data object, loading the audio recording buffer into it, and then the audio classifier that you created earlier has a classify async function that will do the inference for you. At this point, you just need to accept the results in the callback you created earlier and then do something with them. For our sample on GitHub, we display classified sounds and their confidence like you can see here. In the next video of this series, you will learn about natural language processing and how it can be used for classification or finding out how similar two blocks of text are and how you can use both of those features in your Android apps. So I'll see you there.